How to Implement Counting Sort in C-Sharp Counting Sort was invented by Harold H. Seward in 1954 at MIT, as well as Radix Sort. It is a linear time sorting algorithm like Radix Sort, Bucket Sort, or Bin Sort. This is because it is not a comparison-based sorting algorithm, as it does not compare to other numbers in the array. And so, the time complexity is equal to the data size n plus the range of numbers k. As we go through the algorithm, in the most basic case, we have n reads, n writes, then we have k plus 1 reads and k plus 1 writes. So we have a big O of n plus k, space time complexity, an average of n plus k, and a best case of n plus k. Counting sort is a stable sorting algorithm, i.e. if we have duplicates in the array, they will maintain their original order. The classic implementation of counting sort is not an in-place sorting algorithm because it has a separate input and output array. So how does counting sort work? Counting sort works by it counts the number of distinct keys for a range of positive integers. Side note, counting sort is also the subroutine for radix sort, which handles large keys more efficiently. Also, counting sort does not work well when the range of values is larger than the list of elements. For example, here we have a long array of integers, and each integer ranges from the numbers 0 through 9. So then we would make another array that is 10 integers long to represent the number 0 through 9. We would then traverse our original array and increment the count of each number at its respective index, i.e. if we have 7 zeros, we will put the number 7 at index 0. Next, we add each previous index to the next index, which will give us the final index of each number or set of the same number. We then create another array that's the same length of the original array that we passed in. Then we loop back through the original array, adding each integer to its position we find from our summed list. As we loop through, we then decrement the position for the numbers that we just added we do this until we have all numbers in their sorted positions. As a side note, this algorithm can be modified in many ways. It can be modified to use negative numbers. It can also be useful for sorting characters by their ASCII values, 0 through 255. So let's look at the implementation of counting sort. Here's our example array with numbers from 0 through 9 in random order. Here we set our range to 10 to represent the numbers 0 through 9 to pass into our algorithm. And here's our call to counting sort, which we pass in our array and our range. Here's the counting sort method. It takes in an array and a range of k, and it returns an integer array. The first thing we do is create an array of zeros, the length of our range of numbers, in this case 0 through 9. Next, we go from 0 to the length of our array that we passed in, and then increment the value in the counting array for that corresponding integer. As you can see, the first number in our array is 0. So at index 0 of the counting array, we increment it by 1. We now have 1, 0 at position 0 in our counting array. Now the next item in our list is the number 2. So at position 2 in our count array, we will increment it by 1. So as you can see, we have 1, 2 in our count array now. We continue for the rest of our original array. Now that we went through the length of our original array, we have all our respective counts at their respective indexes in our count array. So we have 7 zeros at 0, 5 fours at 4, and so on. Next we must find the final index of each integer in our array. This will help us repopulate a new array with each integer in sorted order. We do this by starting at the second position in our array and adding each previous count to the next count to get each integer's final index in the sorted array. So at position 0 we will have 7. We do not need to look at position 0 because there's nothing before it. So now we're looking at position 1 which we add position 0 to. So we have 7 and we have a 0 so 7 plus 0 is 7. Next we look at position 2. So we would have 5 and 7, so we would add 7 and 5, and position 2 would end up being 12. As you can see, position 2 is now 12, and we do this for the remainder of the array. As you can see, as we added all previous numbers to our next numbers in our counting array, we now have the final position of each integer, i.e. the final 0 is at position 7, or index 6 in our resulting array that we will return. 
We must now create a result array that is equal to the length of our original array. So we can take the values from our original array and put them into this resulting array in sorted order. So now starting with the rightmost item of our original array, we find its position, then we decrement that index value for the length of the original array, i.e. we loop backwards from the length minus one of our original array to zero. So we start at position 26 in our original array, which gives us the value of seven. And we look at our counting array, and we can see that the final index, or the final position for seven is at 24, but to convert it to an index for an array, we must subtract one, so the index is actually 23 in this case. So in our result array at position 23, we will insert the number seven. So now we take the same number found at position 26 from our original array, which is the number seven, and now we must decrement 24 to 23 for the next iteration of the loop, because next time if we add another seven, we want to add it to position 23. As you can see, our seven is at index 23, position 24 minus one, and we continue through our loop until we put all the numbers in their correct position. As you can see, as we loop through the length of our original array, we start to populate the numbers in their proper positions. And when we have a duplicate, like a four, our original counted index would have been 21, and then we would have subtracted one from that. And so the actual index in the array is four. And then after we add four to the array, then we subtract one from our counted index. So next time when we loop through, then we can add four at position 19. And we do this for the rest of our array until we have all the numbers in sorted order. So as you can see, here's our final array in sorted order. And that's about all there is to the implementation of counting sort in C sharp. However, we can look at a simpler example of counting sort that does not maintain the order of the objects. So this is an unstable version of counting sort. It has less steps, it's a little easier to understand. So let's take a look at this simple example. So in this simple version of counting sort, we first make our array of numbers from zero through nine. Then we loop through our original array going from zero through the length of the array. And then we increment our temporary array where we hold the count each time we find an element in the original array, just as we did before. Here we have an integer to represent the resulting array position in the uh, final array. Now we can loop through our counting array going from zero to the length of our temporary counting array. And then for each position in our counting array, we can go from zero to the number that we have in our counted array. So for the number zero, we will loop from zero to seven. And here we will add the number zero seven times to our original array. On each loop, we just increment our resulting position. And here's our original array after we loop through putting all zeros into the array. Now we will loop through for all the ones. So we have zero ones, so we will put no ones in the array. And then we will loop through for all the twos and we have five twos, so we'll put five twos in our array. As you can see, we have all our zeros in our array. Then we have all our twos in our array. And we continue this until we have all the proper numbers in our array in sorted order. As you can see, now we have our original integer array in sorted order. This is just a simple example of the previous counting sort that I just went over. Um, but this is not a stable version of this algorithm. So it should not be used for objects with numbers. So for example, if you had milk that was a dollar, Coke that was a dollar, and juice that was a dollar, they'd all be a dollar. And so if they're all rep represented as one, you wouldn't know what to put back into the array. So this is only for um, simple integer problems and uh, easier way to understand counting sort. So here again is the proper implementation of counting sort in C sharp. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and a comment below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching.